I got one question to ask you. Can you do this thing alone? I've trained 99% of my life alone. No one pat me on the back. I did all of the work alone. Wolves don't lose sleep over the opinions of a lesser species. Be alone. Go to that dark space. You may not want to fight that battle, but you need to. A beast is someone who can go through hell and be grateful that their legs are working. What are you? Are you a sheep or are you a wolf? When you train alone, I can take myself to such a level of real, real passion and purpose. Nobody's gonna feed us. You gotta feed yourself. The feeling I get is something I can't even explain. I don't need anyone. It's on you. You gotta want it as bad as you want to breathe. Success starts with you. It's all on you. If you want to be strong, you gotta learn to fight alone. Yes, you're tired. Yes, your mind is saying give up. Yes, it's saying quit. But you cannot quit because you realize you have not reached the goal yet. Day in and day out, you got to keep on working. And if you get knocked down, so what? Rise up and get up. Nobody's going to believe in you until you've already done it. Nobody's going to come and celebrate with you until you've already done it. Which means you're going to have to work for a long time by yourself with no applause, with no awards. No one's going to believe in you in the beginning, nor should they. Be okay with it. If I have to do it alone, I will. Start alone, but get started. When you wake up early, it's just you. The world can wait, right? Emails can wait. Text messages can wait. The boardroom can wait. The playing field can wait. The court can wait. Everything can wait. And I can get dialed in with what I've been called to do. I can get dialed in with why I'm here. What is my purpose without any outside influences or stimuli? I don't need coffee right now. I don't need alcohol. I don't need an outside stimuli to get my day jump started. I just need to get up and get dialed in. We want to be successful, but we don't want to get dialed in on a morning routine. It's unbelievable to me how much we want success, but we don't want structure. Put away the devices, put away the distractions, put away the outside stimuli and the influences and all of the voices and get dialed in. If you're listening to me, let this be a moment of transformation and motivation, but let this moment not just move you, but change you to take action. Why am I here? What have I been placed on this earth to do? All of a sudden, when I wake up and the world is sleeping, I get a different perspective. I can get my agenda, my targets, and my aims crystallized in my head. And whatever becomes clear in my head, yo, I can hold in my hand. Period. All of us has this power within us, this force of nature that we have not tapped into. There's another level. Life is lived on levels. And these levels are unlocked by taking action. My question to you is, Will you take action and do something out of your paradigm? If you're going to obliterate programs and patterns, then you've got to do something different. Shake it up. Wake up early, man. Get up. It's time for an identity shift. It's time for elevation in your relationships and in your health and in your mindset and in your approaches and in your strategies. It's time to get into this space of innovation. It's your time. It's your turn. The wait is over. Get up and give back to yourself. If you're listening to me, get up, get up, get up, get up. It's time to go. Most people don't feel like waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Do it because you don't feel like doing it. 
You need to be the person that does it even if they don't feel it, but they do it because they're called to. Everybody wants to unleash greatness within them and everybody wants to be their best selves. So you're going to have to do stuff you don't feel like doing in order to get there. And so if we want to step into this transformative experience, then I need to have a competitive advantage over the competition. Where you say, man, I'm in competition with nobody, just me. And I get that and I've said that. But the truth of the matter is, is if you don't do something the other man is not doing, then you're going to get knocked off. If you want longevity, if you want sustainability, if you want to scale, if you want peak performance, if you're going to do something in your bloodline, if you're going to pass something down generationally, if you're going to be a light, if you're going to do something that's never been done, then sometimes you're going to have to get up when you don't feel like it. If we're going to unleash this untapped potential, then I have to do something that's going to break the current paradigms that I've been living under. I got to do something that's going to obliterate the status quo. What you're going to discover about waking up at a certain time, specifically at a time you don't feel like it, that after a while, you will love it. Once you get that itch, once you smell that potential, all of a sudden the world opens up to you and 3 a.m., 4 a.m. is no longer a burden. It's just what you do. And you don't even need an alarm clock to go off because your passion awakens you. Your passion. You can go three, four hours of sleep and you're ready to go again because something inside of you is saying, I gotta achieve something. You got work to do. So make that decision that there's no turning back. And so we want to become unstoppable. And we want to be resilient. But we don't want to do what's impossible for most people. For most people, 3 a.m. is just like it's impossible in their mind. They don't even think about it. It's something they're just not going to do. They're going to get up at 7, 8, 9, 10. And so you've got to do what's impossible for most people in order to be that unstoppable force of nature. And I am an advocate for rest. Don't get me wrong. Like, we got to get rest. We need to sleep. I understand that. But there are seasons and timetables and there are rooms I've got to walk into and there are hands that I have to shake and there are contracts that I have to sign and there are deals that I have to close that are going to require me to lose sleep sometimes. And so if I believe in the power of the future, then I got to be willing to get up. Break through. Do something you've never done. Start your day at a time where it is a sacrifice until it becomes an obsession. I get up early when the competition is sleeping. I get a competitive advantage in the marketplace. I get peace and quiet and some solitude where I can focus on me. I can condition myself. I can prepare myself. I can accomplish more by getting up earlier. When people are sleeping and I am working, by the time they wake up, bam, I'm already done. I'm done. I'm in a flow state. I can break out of the monotony. I can break out of the mundane. I can snap out of autopilot and step into that powerful driving force that is within me to help me unleash my untapped potential, period. Waking up early gets me in touch with myself. It gets me in tune. It gets me in motion. It gets me in flow where I can perform my best. And I can get hyper-focused on what matters most and I can eliminate distractions and everything that was hindering me all of a sudden, wham, I hit a state of elevation. Everything that was toxic, everything that was not for me, everything that was not life-giving, I can get very clear on the future. 
It is time for transformation. It is time to unlock resilience and ignite energy and vitality. It's going to increase productivity. It's going to shift your identity. And it's going to unlock the dimension of unstoppable momentum. If you want this, then try it for one week. The wolf on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. It's not easy going it alone. But if you keep going, stay true to yourself. It will be worth it in the end. The hardest walk you can make is the walk you make alone. But that is the walk that makes you the strongest. That is the walk that builds your character the most. To all of you fighting battles alone, to all of you going against the grain, battling the naysayers, stay strong, keep going. Stay strong, keep going. This walk is hard. But the hardest walks lead to the greatest destinations. The toughest climbs always lead to the best views. It will be worth it in the end. And if you show what you are made of, the right people will show up in your life. You won't be a lone wolf forever. You have qualities only few can admire because most don't possess. You have strength only few can understand because most have never experienced. So don't give in. Don't settle. Don't lower your expectations to fit into the world. You were born to stand out. You were born to lead. Lead the pack. They say the wolf on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. Always be that wolf climbing the hill. Always hungry for more. Always hungry to grow, to feed your mind and rise to the highest level you can take yourself. Never looking back, always looking forward to the next feast, feast of success in whatever you do. It does not matter if you have to walk alone for a while. It is much better to walk alone in the right direction than to follow the herd walking in the wrong direction. Stay strong. Be different. Your destiny is in your hands. Get out there and hunt it. Just want to win or are you absolutely committed because when you are committed when you have made the decision that I am going to win it's no longer a want it is a must and when something becomes a must when you become obsessed with what you've been called to do you will sacrifice people that are committed are willing to make the sacrifices. And so ask yourself the question, have you sacrificed everything? Are you paying the price? You gotta pay the price for what you want. Everything in your future comes at a cost. I am acquainted with loss, pain, lack, and famine. I wanna win now. 
because winning has everything to do with your mentality. It has everything to do with how you talk, how you walk, how you think, how you overcome. Winning is not just a crown or a trophy. It is the process. It is who I am becoming. And that is how we win. If you are going to hit your goal, and if you're going to punch through your targets, you have got to see differently. You have got to think differently. You are going to have to connect differently. You are going to have to communicate differently. One day, I just decided I'm going to raise my standards. Make a decision. Raise your expectations. You got to go to the next level. There's always another level. You've been in this place of misery long enough. It's time to win. There is no other option. Winning is a non-negotiable. It's what I do. And all of a sudden, wham! No longer is it just what you do. It is who you have become. Because there are some people that win, and then there are winners. There are people who win, there are people who lose, and there are people who are winners. This ain't just something I do. It is who I have become. I am. A winner. Consider this, that all environments do not breed and nurture a winning spirit. Not everybody grew up in a winning home. Yet, we often witness living examples of greatness springing up out of adversity. Somebody that chooses to defy the odds somebody that chooses to be the one in their bloodline that changes everything one thing i know is that we've all been hit with a measure of adversity at some point in our life you already know what failure feels like people that are winners win both inner and outer and they see it not just as an opportunity but as a birthright. Winners are obsessed with counsel. Winners are obsessed with accountability. Winning is a habit. Winning is loving. Winning is being moved with compassion because everybody deserves my best. Winning is wrapped up in the details. That is winning, the mentality. Winning is what I do at home, it's what I do on my job, it's my creative pursuits, it's my social activities, it's what communities I'm connected to. So are you willing to lose sleep? Are you willing to put the work in? Are you fully persuaded? Are you determined? Real winners. These are the people who have a positive self-awareness. They are crystal clear about where they are and where they're looking to go. This is the type of person that's got tunnel vision. They move in the dimension of mindfulness and gratitude. When we unpack the architecture of a winning mentality, we're dealing with someone that is hard and dangerous. That's all I'm thinking about. That's all I want. That's all I see. That's all I want to hold in my hand is a win. Winners are gap closers. These are people that every single day they're beating on their craft and they're closing the gap between where they are and where they're supposed to be. I'm supposed to be here! I belong here! Have you counted up the cost? It's going to cost you everything to win! The winning isn't just a behavior, winning is an attitude. Because you can have good behavior and a bad attitude. And so winning is a behavior, winning is an attitude, winning is a way of living. You're going to have to manifest that thing that you see in your head to hold it in your hands. Make it count. What you go through, you will grow through. I know you feel stuck in reversion. You may be tired, you may be broken, you may be hurting, 
But listen, winning has everything to do with your mentality. I am going to win. I've had enough of the loss. I've had enough of the lack. I want to win now. I want to win. We all know what it's like to lose a job, to lose a family member, to lose money, to lose a position. Some of us have even lost our minds at points in our lives. So we are acquainted with loss. Some of us have lost love towards someone or lost passion or lost focus. Many of you listening to me know what it's like to lose everything. You have another day where you failed yesterday, where you almost gave up yesterday, when you almost lost your mind, when you almost gave in, when your back was up against the wall. But there is something in all of us, something very inborn, interwoven, something very intrinsic, a distinctive in all of us, a desire to win. What are you made of? What is your DNA? What is your mentality? What are your goals? In this very moment, you have an opportunity. Seize the opportunity. Everybody wants to win. Because winning is not just an exterior thing. How you overcome conflict, how you navigate a room, how you navigate relationships, how you manage your time, how you manage your money. It's not just an in thing. It is not just what I want. It is who I am becoming. That is how we win. Everybody wants to win. It's time to win. What is preventing most people from moving in the direction that they want to move is a lack of discipline. And no one wants to hear that answer. It's the harshest answer. This is hard work, it's every day. When they see that word discipline, it's actually slapped in the face because they know it's true. If you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it, that's the most powerful thing in the world. What are you gonna get without discipline? Are you gonna be in good physical shape without discipline? Are you gonna be financially successful without discipline? Are you gonna, are you gonna become more intellectually powerful without discipline? You're gonna see me for who I am. Because I need to change who I'm not. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. If you wanna make progress in your life, you gotta have discipline. Discipline equals freedom. You want freedom in your life? You wanna achieve what it is you wanna achieve? How do you do that? You do it through discipline. You do it through hard work. You do it by knowing what it is you're supposed to do and, and then doing actually it. doing it. <laughs> yeah. You have to face yourself. What am I gonna do today to change what I see in this mirror? It starts with yourself, man. Through hard work, you can outwork anybody. Like I'm gonna be extreme in my discipline. Somebody asked me that on social media. How do you master discipline? I'm like, you don't. You don't. You keep working at it though. Every day. Yes. It takes power. It takes effort. It takes discipline to break the old you. What gives you confidence, not being afraid, is overcoming the fear. There's no one in the world that enjoys taking criticism. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. The tougher things you go through, the more confidence you're going to have, the more confidence you have, the better you're going to get. But I'm going to work and try and make myself better. And that's the mentality you have. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance and we go a different route. What I did was what I knew how to do, which was work. You figure it out by going inside yourself. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. That's what I'm gonna do. When I was a little tiny kid, you know, five, six, the only thing I can remember was wanting to be some kind of commando. There was no, there was not any question for me. I knew what I wanted to do. I never thought about quitting at any mm, moment in really? time. SEAL teams is, is going to war. That's what we do. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. 
you're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior. And I, would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than the normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. And, and the fact of the matter is, bullets don't have your name on it. Bullets say to whom it may concern. And the bullet doesn't care who you are. They don't care how much training you've had. They don't care how well prepared you are. And if it's your day, it's your day. And so I think once you get to a point where you recognize and accept the fact that you could, you could die, then you can move past that. That's a really high percentage of people that quit, but there's also people that fail. We have the ability to go in such a space if you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. I worry about missing out on opportunities that I have because I got friends that will never get the chance to execute on opportunities because they didn't come home. And, and that's literally what I told my guys was we've, we've crossed the line and there's no, there's no possible way to replace or describe or overcome the amount of just heart-wrenching sadness that you feel when you lose a teammate. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what to say. First time, second time, third time. What I did was, and I told my guys, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. The only thing that I know to do is to go back to work. And I do know this, if Mark was here, he would want us to go back to work. And so we're gonna lock and load our weapons and we're gonna go do what we do. That's the reality of, of combat. When you see people in these hard situations, that's when human nature gets revealed. And the more you can understand human nature, the better leader you're gonna be. There's only one type of human being that can't improve as a leader, and that's the, that's the person that lacks humility. Because when someone lacks humility, you can't teach them. A leader has to be balanced. The older I get, the less I know. One of the things that I realize in a leadership position yep. is that the words that you say matter, the actions you take matter. People are listening, people are watching, people are respecting or disrespecting you based on how you carry yourself. Relationships and trust are almost the same word, right? A relationship is something that we've built trust. Now, you can have a bad relationship, and what does that mean? That means there's no trust there. I don't trust you, we have a bad relationship. The way I build trust with people is I give them trust. That's how I build trust. I give it. I give trust to build trust. If I micromanage you and I don't let you make any decisions yourself, well, you're never gonna step up and learn how to lead because you don't get to make any decisions for yourself. Would you rather win or be like? Well, I'm gonna tell you those aren't opposites. The team that likes each other, they win. I'm trying to take the lessons that I was lucky enough to learn and get them to as many people as I can so they don't have to suffer through the same mistakes that I made. I mean, you're always gonna have regret. You, you know, I don't spend a lot of time with regret. That's good. You know, because there's there's not much that you can do about it. Yeah. So what what the way I look at regret is what did I learn from it? What, what did I learn from whatever thing I'm looking at that I know I could have done a better job, could have done different. There's a million things like that, but I don't sit there and think about them all day long. What I think is like, hey, here's the lessons that I learned from them. I won't make those mistakes again and move forward. Every single day for me, it starts at you know, ground zero. I've got to, I've got to go forward with an open mind, with a humble mind, looking at the world. When somebody gives you feedback, you listen to it. Number one, you gotta be humble. And if you're not humble, you're not looking for feedback and you're not listening to it. No feedback, no improvement. Feedback is, is built upon being humble. 
everything that I look at, I try and look at from a humble perspective. And if you don't do that, it's going to be mm. a problem. Oh, yeah. If I'm looking down the sights of my weapon and I'm shooting, my world is this big. The minute that I stop shooting, point my weapon at high court, take a step back and actually look around, I can see infinitely more. Eventually, you got to start doing it. As a leader, you should be listening 98% of the time and talking 2% of the time. Mm -hmm. You will need to normalize in your mind walking alone. You got to get up on your own. You got to be able to make big decisions on your own. You got to lose weight on your own. There are a myriad of targets you have to hit by yourself. Oftentimes, it's the people that go away into a very healthy isolation to equip themselves, to condition themselves, to educate themselves, to come out empowered. And so you got to get into this workspace where you can do it by yourself. It doesn't matter if it's the office. It doesn't matter if it's the gym. It doesn't matter if it's the court. It doesn't matter if it's the field. It doesn't matter what arena you are stepping into. You got to get to that place where you don't need attention, you don't need recognition, you don't need the accolades. You just want to put in the work and the next time you surface, the next time you show up, it's game over. If you throw me to the wolves, I'll return, leading the pack. You see, a wolf is willing to leave its pack behind and find a new one. The time is now, and we must adopt the wolf mentality. Be relentless, resilient, never quit, and never look back. I know what it feels like to be fractured and falling into pieces. But you gotta silence the voices in your head that are telling you, you need a shortcut, you need a cheat code. Eliminate the negative, self-sabotaging voices. Find a mirror and tell yourself, I got this today. <laughs> I got this today. I'm gonna make it. I'm going to create it. I'm going to build it. All I have is all I need. Resources may come and go. People may come and go. But I've got a vision, and I've got the provision, and I've got the determination and the discipline to hit my aims and to punch through my targets. Can you do this thing without attention? Can you do this thing without public affirmation? Can you do this thing without people telling you that you are everything to them? Without people applauding you and saying you're great, you're awesome, oh, you're amazing. Can you do this thing alone? Can you be your own cheerleader for a moment? Can you be your own hype man for a moment? Can you tell you I'm good enough? I got this, that all I have is all I need. I believe in friendships and partnerships and collaboration and counsel and advice. But there are some things in life you are going to have to do alone. There are some arenas you're gonna to have to show up in and nobody is coming. Nobody's coming to save you, nobody's coming to help you. Nobody's coming to show you a shortcut. You gotta figure this out on your own. For most of us, nobody's gonna feed us. You gotta feed yourself. You wanna lose the weight? You wanna reach your target, your aim? You gotta put the work in. You gotta feed yourself the food that is required to power the body that you want. It's not about trying to be a Lone Ranger more than it is about taking responsibility and prioritizing yourself first. There are some things in life nobody's gonna show up. It's all on you. I need you to find a mirror right now and tell yourself, it's all on me, it's all on me. This one is all on me. When I go get this degree, ultimately, I got to go get this degree. When I go get this certification, ultimately, I got to get this certification. I've got to finish strong. I've got to condition myself. I've got to go get the education. I've got to get out of bed. I've got to go to the gym. I've got to eat clean. Nobody's going to feed me. i got to feed myself. If you're listening to me right now in the gym, on your walk, on your run, you're lifting, you're building, you're creating. 
you're imagining something I just need you to push and I need you to believe that you don't need the spider that you don't need the training wheels that it is your time that it is your turn and you no longer need help you no longer need assistance in this area of your life push like you have never pushed before give it everything you have because that spider is not going to be there for you for the rest of your life if you want to grow one millimeter more, if you want to push, just push a little harder. Everybody wants to grow a little bit taller, so we got to push a little bit harder. Life is lived on levels, and I can't bring my spotter with me. The spotter cannot walk with you all of your life. At some point, you got to say, I got this. I got this. Push! Look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I got this. I got this. If I have to do it alone, I will. Because to fulfill this vision, to fulfill my destiny, ultimately, I am depending on the God that put the dream in my heart and myself. With tears in your eyes, with broken hands and a heavy heart, if nobody is there, and you are in a room by yourself, start alone. But get started. Help is coming. But everything rises and falls on you. Oftentimes, the people that you wanted in your life will reject you, and that rejection is protection. It is a blessing because it's the same people that rejected you that will need you and that will rely on you. Come on, how many people have you tried to help and you were bleeding, battered, and broken. How many times have you called for help and the help was toxic? Come on, how many times have you asked for advice and the advice brought more adversity? Take responsibility for yourself. Take control of your life. I need you to understand your worth and stop playing the blame game because nine times out of ten, the people that hurt you, you brought them into your life. And so you got to reflect over the past. You have to acknowledge the present and you have to cast vision for your future and take accountability and kill the self-condemnation. Stop tearing yourself down on the inside. Stop saying one thing, thinking another and acting in a whole nother way. How you think is how you talk and how you talk must be how you behave because your thoughts will determine your behavior and your behavior determines your future. And so everything's got to line up. And so you need an alignment, an internal alignment. I can't align you. you got to make a decision to align yourself. You can hear a speech and make a decision, but every day you have to make that decision. That decision has to evolve into discipline. And discipline turns into mastery. And mastery builds momentum. You're not going to always get it right, but you got to keep going. When you start alone, you possess a power that few can handle. If you don't have self-confidence, here's what you have. You have a really bad reputation with yourself. You have built a habit of not keeping the promises you make to yourself. We've all heard this mm -hmm. before. You need to believe and know that your one decision, one relationship, one meeting, one book, one thought, one something away from a completely different life. Here's how I built what I would call almost superhuman confidence in spite of my insecurity. Think about that. Superhuman confidence in spite of my insecurity. It's an effort play. If you don't have self-confidence, you've never kept the promises you make to yourself. Check that box. If you have self-confidence, you've started to keep the promises you make to yourself. If you want to have superhuman self-confidence, you keep the promises you make to yourself and one more. So if I'm going to get up and I'm going to work out, I'm going to do 10 reps in the gym, I do one more. If I'm going to do 45 minutes on the treadmill, I do one more. If I want to make 10 contacts in a day, I do that and one more. If I'm going to tell my daughter I love her every day, I'm going to do that and one more. Because in life, we don't get our goals, we get our standards long term. And so if your standard is one more, starts, what starts to happen is you go, I'm willing to do things other people aren't willing to do. And I combine that, that I have great faith, great associations, and I intend to help people. This is a formula to build wonderful self-confidence and never lack humility when you have it. Never link your confidence to your ability. 
that's predicated on your abilities or your achievements, you're always gonna be chasing it. But if you link your confidence to your intentions, mm. man, you have beautiful intentions. And that is something I knew about me. I know I have a good heart. And all of us, we run around carrying these bags of, I'm not qualified because I made this mistake. I had this bankruptcy. This relationship didn't work. I did this thing you don't know about. I'm so ashamed of. That's why you're qualified. That's the thing that qualifies you. Yeah. The humanness in you. You are the only human being with your combination of gifts that you were given, whatever they are, and your experience. Mm -hmm. And real human beings help real human beings by being vulnerable and yeah. transparent, saying, I know where you are. I've messed up. I've made greater mistakes. I felt worse. I know that depression. I know that anxiety. I know that shame. I know what that feels like. You're one away, one relationship, one meaning, one person, one thought away from changing your life. So how do we let go of the past? Well, we have to create a compelling future. In other words, you're not gonna let go of one thing until you've grabbed onto the uh, next. So you have to create a new future. You have to create a future in it. And by the way, it's okay that you don't believe all of it initially, as long as it becomes repetitive and we begin to take steps towards it, right? So it's, it's it, mm -hmm. for me, I still have stuff from my past. There's still a little part of me that doesn't wanna be broke. There's yeah, still yeah. a little bit of fear. It's only, I've said, but you're you, not broke. Yeah, but, but you've interviewed <laughs> some of the most successful actors and entertainers, so have I, and you get them privately, and sometimes yeah. on your show they go, you afraid it's gonna go away? They go, yeah, I am, that's why I work so hard. So there's an element of that that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's creating this vision for your life that's compelling. Can you survive the temporary? And if you can survive the temporary, it says on the other side of temporary pain, you get introduced to your other self. And that other self produces that other life. Uh -huh. And so here's what happens for most of us. We think everything's permanent. And because we think it's permanent, we make permanent decisions based on temporary conditions. Even our bodies, other than our souls, are temporary. But if your body isn't permanent, your problem isn't, your pain isn't, you need to create a different relationship with pain in your life. For most people, their relationship with the pain and the inconvenience is to avoid it. Avoid as so much if you could be, Yeah, but if you could say to yourself, on the other side of this is this other self. The hardest working you've ever been, the most crazy focus you've ever been, was the happiest you've ever been in your life. And the truth of the matter is that most of you don't understand the effort, the time, the focus, the obsessiveness that's required to do something great with your life. But you have to get great and you have to be intentional. You have to be obsessive. Yeah. I know what you put into this. I know what the time is. I know what the relentless pace is. I know what the focus is and how much you think about it. I know this has to be something that's just infectious and when people get around you, it emanates and there's an energy and there's like, this person's just gonna will this to happen. Right. I think just most people dramatically underestimate the amount of obsessive, crazy, relentless focus it takes to be great at something. Yes. And then they go, well, I don't want to be that out of balance or control. Then you don't want to be great. My default personality is uh, insecure. Even today? Even today. Come on. Very much. Really? Very much. So How is that the fault? You wake up and you say, uh, I'm a nobody or what? What's the, um, what's the I story? lack this. I'm fooling everybody. Really? They, if they really knew, you know, I've always tried to disqualify myself. I was bullied as a kid. My dad was an alcoholic. I wasn't a real big guy. Um, I disqualify myself because, you know, the truth is that maybe for a while, everything that I got that was loved when I was a child only came when I achieved something. I wasn't good in school. The only thing I was good at was sports. So my default is tons of insecurity. I love to beat myself up with mistakes I've made. I did this, I did that. I should have done this, I didn't do that. And I've always thought these mistakes, these weaknesses of mine, disqualify me from being happy or helping people. The confidence part is a thing I'm always gonna have to work on. Even I mean, today, even with all the success and the you know the massive show and the big businesses and all the homes and everything that people see, yeah. what yeah. else do you need though to feel more confident? I don't need other things. It's an internal game. The, the stuff is really fleeting and temporary, so I, it's not stuff. What needs to happen for me is that I'm most confident when I'm living in my intention, which is to serve. Like, that's a beautiful expression of a man. A real man is capable of real love. Yeah. That's a sign of real strength. And what we do is we gravitate towards the familiar emotions in our life, even if they're not ones that serve us. 
And I don't think there's negative or positive emotions. I say this in the book. There just are. Yes. Fear isn't negative. It fear in abundance is negative. Some frustration, some anger is appropriate. It's to the dosage level. And we get these four or five of them. For me, some chaos is okay. It's fun. It's exciting. It's exhilarating, right? But getting it every day, every week, every month, all the time, Chaos is my gateway emotion to the ones I don't want. Chaos gives me stress. Chaos gives me anger. Chaos gives me frustration. Chaos gives me fear. I used to think, well, that's a superpower, though, because I've created all these external... Look what I made. Look, look what, what I did. did. Yeah. And I'm doing it because of that. The truth is I did it in spite of it. You did. And there's a lot of things in our lives that we have linked to our formula, our recipe of success that we hold on to, that you've done in spite of those things, not because of those things. But my dad knew I was a dreamer, and my dad would always say, you know, I was one decision away from changing my life the whole time, one choice. And he'd say, Eddie, you're not as far away from these dreams as you think you are. And I'd say, really, Dad? And he'd go, no, you're actually a lot closer than you think. But because you think it's so far away, you behave in accordance with that belief system, and it always keeps it that far away from you. If the things most important to you are your worries, fears, anxieties, problems, bills, you will continue to have people, places, and things revealed to you that confirm it. My definition of greatness is that you create a life that matches your vision for your life. And that's greatness, no matter what that looks like for you. I get up at three because it's silent. It's easier to be focused when the environment is focused. Most of you wake up and you try to make money. Listen to me. If you would make you money would come to you okay you missed that whole thing I just said if you would make you a better person you'd make more money now watch what I do the way people spend their money or treat their money is how I treat my time all right let me explain what I mean to you I make sure that every single day in that 24-hour period that I'm getting a whole bunch of wins so I'm supposed to be doing this at this time, doing this at this time, doing this at this time, doing this at this time. The problem with most of you, you waking up and you worshiping money. Man, I was in the back with Cole. Cole was like, E, I got this opportunity for you. I got this opportunity. I got this opportunity. When you become number one, you have to chase opportunities. So I became number one. Not meaning I'm better than nobody else. It means I just mastered my craft to the point that I know what I do that don't nobody else do. I know that I have a way of doing in this industry what nobody else does and I've picked out in this industry, I've crafted out my own room. And your problem is, you have 50% knocking on doors trying to get the result, somebody at 100%. And you're wondering why it ain't working. Because while you're doing what they're doing, you're not they are. So why do I put more emphasis on time than I put on money? Because they print money. They don't print time. So I'm going to say it one more time. You are worshiping the thing that they make every day. They don't make time every day. Ain't nobody print time. I ain't, I ain't met them yet. I ain't met no billionaire. I ain't met no trillionaire. I ain't met no institution. I ain't met no company. I ain't met nobody print money. So why are you spending more time on the thing they print every day than the thing, you know why? Because you're not developed and you're following other people. When well, you understand that the real thing is time and you ain't got a lot of it, you start focusing on your time and when you get your time right, money will come. Some people go to Dubai once every 10 years. I'm going every other month. Why? When you master yourself, you put yourself in a position that a lot of people can't do what you do and then you become rare and diamonds are rare. That's why they cost so much. If you would become rare, you just like everybody else. You look just like that. You act just like you just like everybody else. When you become you and you become rare, you become a... When you leave this room, you will take full ownership. And the reason why I say it's my fault, even when it's not my fault, because when I say it's your fault, I give you power. I give you control over my life. And I will never give another human control over my life. It's my fault. It's my problem. I'm coming up with the solution for it. Stop being average. Average people can't forgive. Average people can't let go. The greats, we do whatever it takes. Those who have a why can bear almost any high. How did I become number one in the world? Found out my wife had multiple sclerosis. 
They told my wife, listen to me, y'all. My wife so be small. They told my wife she had MS and she's like, bad. Then they told her she had to quit her job and she tear came out of her. The doctor said, you don't have insurance? And she said, yeah, I got insurance. She looked at her like, why are you crying if you got insurance? My wife's identity is in her waking up and working every day. She went to school to be a registered nurse. She went to school to do breast and cervical cancer. She didn't want to be at home. She didn't want to be no home wife. She literally went to school to be a nurse. She loves her job. But when they told her she had to quit, my wife's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, how much you make? She told me 5,000. I said, 5,000 times 12 is how much? 60 times 30 years, how much? 1.8 million. I woke up every day hunting 1.8 1, 1, 1. million. I'm number one in the world, not because I'm a better speaker. I'm not number one in the world because I, I look the best, because I dress the best. I'm not number one because my, my, my enunciation is the best, because I use the best words, because I got the best sentence structure, because I come from the best background. I, got, I, made, I became number one because I woke up and I hunted down the 1.8 mil so my wife would never have to work again. If you waking up every day and you want a Rolls Royce, you ain't about to beat me. If you waking up for a Bentley, you ain't about to beat me. If you waking up for a gold chain, you ain't about to beat me. If you woke up for a Rolex, you ain't about to beat me because you're going after material stuff. I'm going after my food. I'm going after my baby. I'm going after my high school sweetheart. I'm going after my kids so they can see their mama and their mama don't die. I'm making sure their mama don't get in a wheelchair if I can help you. If their mama don't lose her sight, if I can help it. If her mama don't lose her memory. If I start studying MS like I had. I start studying MS. Your problem is you're not studying this product like, it, like your life out on it. Like your life depend on it. You playing with this product. You know what? You like the people that work for me that want to check. And they never end up getting it. But the people who own, who work for my company, act like they own it. Wake up every single day making sure she don't have to go back to work. So watch this. I started studying and I found out two things. One is stress. So I had to take her out of a stressful situation. And then the other thing was vitamin D. And I literally, people say, bro, why you move to Southern California? Because my wife got it, man. I literally type what's the best place in the world for vitamin D. Southern California. What's the best temperature in the world in the United States of America? San Diego, California. It don't never, it don't go... 99, 100, and then back down. It's right there. I said, San Diego, I'm hunting down. You're moving to San Diego. Why? I don't care about San Diego. My why? My wife. In the first year, last year, we were in San Diego. My wife said to me, we moved back to Michigan when the summer came. My wife said, you know something? I said, what? She said, I never took a nap in California. I said, what you mean by that? She said, the sun energized me, and I never needed to take a nap gonna come after me the reason why most of you can't do what you do you can keep getting knocked down you keep quitting because whatever your why is it ain't stronger than the beat down you take whatever the beat down whatever life is throwing at you whatever punches is blowing you whatever's happening it ain't that it ain't deep enough for you to wake up like you getting punched and you feel that pain and you like ain't no need to get up no and i feel you you need to stay down because life gonna beat you you talking about making millions life gonna beat you down you're talking about making millions, multi-millions, billions, life gonna beat you down. So, so when you feel the pain and you get knocked down, stay down. If you got a why that's deeper than your pain, every trial, every triple, I will my way through it. I don't care if it's cancer, I will my way through it. I don't care if it's MS, I will my way through it. I don't care if I'm struggling in school and I'm trying to get a degree, I will my way through it. I don't care if you fail the boards, go again. I don't care if you fail the law exam, go again, will your way through it. Some things you can skill yourself through, some stuff you gotta will your way through. Without a vision, there's no direction. Without direction, there's no progress. Reason why you're struggling getting up, because you don't have nothing to get up for. I'm the best ever. There's no one that can match me. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. They're gonna fear me. You have to be the champion before you become the champion, so that means lifestyle. You have to be him before you become him. You gotta be him before you become him. 
That's how it starts. You look at somebody, I want to be like him. You don't say, hey, I'm a bad mother. I want to fight everybody out here. Nobody's going to kick my ass. You see somebody and say, hey, I might want to do that. Well, greatness is when you make your delusions your reality. Nothing's impossible for somebody who's going to try. If you're going to try, it's capable of being done. But you'd fight Tyson Fury. Yeah, I'll fight a lion if the price is right. <laughs> My whole objective is your total surrender, your total domination. I'm going to destroy you. That's why Rogan said when he watched you, you were intimidating. Your rage is a very unique rage. Well, that's their fault to be intimidating. How are you going to let somebody scare you for something you worked for? I respect a person who's willing to die for what he truly wants. Ali had the will to win like nobody that ever lived in boxing. Then he believed he projected to his opponent. Really look at how did Ali beat George Foreman? Huh, how does Ali be Sonny listening? How do you beat these guys? How did he even beat Joe Frazier? Fighting the way he fights. He beats them because he refused to lose. But we have to believe that we're divine and that we learn from our experience because confidence breeds success and success breeds confidence. They go hand in hand. You have to know who you are first. You know who you are. I know who I am. People say they're great all the time. You this, you that. Whatever they say, I, I know who I am. Without self-love, you're nothing. Because self-love is discipline. And discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. I never wanted to be obscure. I was born in obscurity, and I never wanted to deal with that again. I'm invincible. I'm a savage. I'm ferocious. I'm the smartest savage. I knew I wasn't going to die before I became champ. When this is over, everybody's going to know my name. Did you ever fight somebody that you were like, that they got you? Was there ever a kid that got you or no? Absolutely. In order to be good, you have to lose it and understand loss. Because loss is life. Adversity make the strong stronger or the weak weaker. Twelve, thirteen. What happens next? So again, get arrested, and I see Muhammad Ali come to visit the institution that I'm in. You said you're in jail, and Ali shows up. I'm 12 years old, and Ali comes there, and, he, and they showed the movie The Greatest first. So this is 77, and um, after the movie, the lights come up, and Ali comes in, and I see him. I, well, I want to be just like him. I don't wow. know how it happened. The spirit hit me. Boom! I want to be like him. And then I get transferred to this other facility, you know, for real bad kids. I met a gentleman there that was a boxer and he used to teach me how to box. So he took me to a great trainer named Customato and that's why I'm here. I respected Ali and I worshiped Ali. Yeah, this is the moment I knew I wanted to be a fighter. Freaking believable yeah. story. So your inspiration happened at 12 years old. Yeah. Then you meet Cus. Yes. How is Cus treating you? What um, was his way of leading you? It's a degree of just peeling all that dirt and stuff, that insecurity and um, developing into character. And um, that's why I had a wonderful time with him. Because everything about everything about his life was about me. This world is one big school, and we're the students of this world. The mind is always hungry. And the mind wants to do good, but we get so many negative thoughts in our mind, it's almost overwhelming to be positive. Listen, I've been down and up, down and up, broken up, and why am I still here? Because life is going to give everybody a bad hand. No one's going to leave here without being tried in life. So inspiration. So is that what got you to be uh, willing to be disciplined to get what you want, like to become a champion? At 14 years old, I'm willing to Absolutely. do everything it takes to be a champion? 
Absolutely. And then I had Cuss over there telling me why, why should he have it? That's one thing I never had in my life, because I always got picked on and I never had jealousy or enviness about anything. And Cuss possessed that, you know, and he was telling me, why should he have all that money and you don't? Why, why do you believe that he's better than you? Why do you think he should have all that money and you don't? And he was really serious about it. And that was the competition shit. That's it right there, breathing that stuff right in me. Why should, why should he have it and he's not better than you? How did you handle that when he told you that, 14? Would it piss you off? Were you like, I'm gonna go train to whoop his ass and uh, get there one day? What was, a, what was your response to it? He said one day, this guy knew how to really get in my head. He said, man, you're fighting good, but I wish you were bigger. He said, I wish you were like Kenny Norton and uh, Mike Weaver because they had big bodies and they could intimidate somebody. And that hurt my feelings. I said, I make sure the whole world will be afraid of me. He trained me to be totally ferocious in the ring and out. Well, yeah, and that's what I was. <laughs> that's what I was, yeah. Push yourself more. You push yourself when, when you sometimes you have to submit to yourself. I'm doing everything. And first day in the morning, three in the morning, you do your uh, four miles, come back in. Three in the morning? Yeah. Do your four miles, come back in, do your body exercise and all that stuff. After that, I go out there to eat breakfast, go to the school, come back from school, eat my dinner, go back to the gym at six o'clock, train, come back at eight o'clock. Um, watch fights, start all over again. Everybody here is gonna fight for what they love for. Even if they never had a fifth fight in their mm. life, they're gonna fight. Listen, once I'm involved in something, I wanna know the beginning of it. I wanna know where it came from, how it was started, who's the first guy that invented it. That's just how my mind works. How could you guys even dare fight me? How dare you even think that you could beat me? And you sound like a mathematician when you're talking about the art of boxing. I was born for it. There's nothing I would do unless I have um, a possibility of being humiliated. Because when I succeed, I truly succeed. I was bred to climb high and high into the sky and tumble down. I am truly grateful that I found my wings before I hit the ground.